What's going on everybody? Today's video will be pretty cool. I'm excited about this one. I figured out a way to take a picture, so 2D picture, and create a 3D part such as this that I'm going to use on my car. So stick with us and I'll show you how I did it. Alright, so to make this video make a little more sense, um, this part right here, you can see the tape left over from, I used to have little gurney flaps taped right here, and I'll put a tag up here of a video I did last season um, where I ran streamers. I ended up with like little, um, you know, tape streamers going across here to see the angle that the air was coming out and it looked a little more turbulent uh, with one setup versus the other so I think doing something like this I don't, don't know if that'll focus but something that's a little bit more of a you know a ramp uh, rather than just a hard gurney um, might be beneficial pretty much this is going to sit right here and as you can see since I printed it with this curve in it you know this tape wasn't here you can see that it fits pretty good the other thing that's cool about having something 3d printed I could always just print bigger ones shorter ones but I can also drill holes into the bottom of this that correspond with holes that I drill through here so that way I can just you know undo the hardware I won't, I won't be left with that ugly tape line so I could try you know multiple configurations or if it's a hot day and I want that you know extra airflow out you know put in a bigger one uh, so it should be pretty cool Alright, so here we are in on shape again. I'll put a tag up here to our last video, going a little bit more into this program. So what we're gonna do is make a sketch on the front plane, which will be our image. I already have it on the computer. Alright. draw our rectangle to drag it out to where we need it. It's viewed normal too, so there we go. All right, so now we have the picture in. So we need to trace this line right here. This one's a little bit easy because you can see the core material of the hood, almost outlining it a little bit. So we will do it right on sketch one so it all zooms uh, for us together. So let's view normal too. We will let's draw a line right along the top of the core material right till it starts to curve a little bit. Then we will use this spline tool up here. It's alright if you're not that accurate with the spline tool. Double click to escape the spline. And then you can drag these to where they look good. Oh boy, messed something up, there we go. So that looks pretty good. We know we're gonna follow that curve pretty nicely. And we will accept, oh I'm sorry, we need to now we need to dimension it I'll put a picture up right here of the width we need so from this point to this point we know we need let's put it where you can see it 8.5 inches and it all zooms for us there we go so that looks pretty good we're pretty much right on and we'll accept all of that now we need to extrude that line. Since it's a line, it needs to be a surface. Because if we're on solid, see how I can't click 
that line that I just drew, but if we go to surface, you can. I'll click sketch one over here just so it does all of it for us. Um, let's go, I think backwards might make a little more sense because we're going onto the hood. And let's go three quarters of an inch. And accept that, looks, looks good. All right, so now we have our first surface. So now what we need to do, imagine we're looking at the car from the side now. We want to make that little ramp feature on both sides. All right, so the best way I found to do this is create a plane. And it is a, a line angle plane off of, whoops, not that. that line right there. You can drag it how you need it. So we'll just type 90. Check. So that plane is created. So now we want to draw on this new plane. View normal too. And what we want to do is We know we're three quarters of an inch long. We'll go to, let's make it a half inch high. And then we will do a three point arc from this point to this point. And then see how it snaps to tangent right there? We'll just do that just to make it simple. And now we want to coincident this tool up here. This point needs to sit on this point. There you go, everything switched to black, so we know we're constrained. And looks good. All right, so now that our sketch is good, we need to extrude it, but we need to extrude it along this line and this curve. So that's where this sweep tool comes in up here. So we will sweep, the faces in the sketch to sweep would be the triangle we just drew. And the path that we wanted to take is the curve that we drew earlier. And there you go, there's our shape. So we will accept that. There it is. So our part is designed, pretty much ready to go. Now we just need to export it put it into the slicer and start printing. We are going to export. STL, it's in inches, find download. Okay, okay, so here we are in our Creality slicer. And for some reason, this one decided to, even though I exported it in inches, it imports it in millimeters, so We'll use a quick little converter and 0.75 inches is 19.05 millimeters. And since we're locked at all scales equally. All right, so something else we're gonna do, if you look at it, it's actually because we drew it in on shape at an angle, it's not flat right now. Let's lay it flat. There you go. So that whole flat line is good. All right, so now what we need to do is duplicate it one time. And the second one, we will mirror it across the... Uh... Okay, good, X-plane. So there you go. You can now see we just have basically two opposites. So one will be left, one will be right. Now we need to set up all of our tools over here. Layer height, I want it to be a little bit smoother, so let's do a 0.15. That added about a half hour. Shell thickness, since I want to screw into the bottom of it, let's do 1.2, which is three layers. Oops, 
bottom top thickness. Let's do two millimeters. Uh, support tight. I didn't have to do this in the last one, but since this basically just rises up into the air, so let's do a support touching build plate. Added only a few minutes. And then platform adhesion. I haven't had good luck with really long parts like this staying down. So we will do a raft. And believe it or not, the raft added about an hour to the print but I'd rather have a better chance of it turning out correct than not. So there we go. So I think our printer is set up good. Our parts look good. Toolpath to SD. Now from this bit, the SD card goes into the printer. So from this point, um, we pretty much just wait for everything to heat up and it starts printing. So it is the next morning, and here they are. So you can see the bridge support kind of supported this overhang. It should just come, yeah, that was really easy. And now, you can see the raft just comes right off, more or less. And then this bridge structure, you can see how fine it is. Most of it should just kind of break right off. But I could always just get a little razor blade and just kind of cut it off with, with both hands. While well, I'm not trying to hold the camera doing this. So anyways, there you go. So there's our wickers. So, so now that we have these, um, we're going to go ahead and get them on the car. So first thing we have to do is get rid of the old two-faced tape that's stuck on there. One of these things, it's called an eraser wheel. I've had this thing for probably 10 years. Um, I'll put a link to one of these in the description below, but it's great for getting rid of old tape or vinyl decals and stuff like that. So let's jump to that. So all I did was put little dimple marks where the holes need to be. You can see I'm at like the rear most part of it because I need some thickness for the screws to go into. We obviously couldn't do it at like the very front. There's not gonna be a lot of meat there for the screws to bite into, but I'm using some coarse thread screws. So they should be sufficient. This isn't a high loaded part. Also, I'm sure some people might comment that there is threaded inserts that you can basically, you know, bond into uh, 3D printed parts like this. Um, I don't think they're necessary in this case. Um, in the future, I might need to use them, but this should be good for this. I'm either gonna be 100% right and it'll work, or I'll be 100% wrong and these things will go flying off the first time I get on track, so we'll find out. All right, so what was happening was the screw went through and kind of poked the top, you can see. So what we're gonna do is just add a washer or two under the head of the nut or the bolt. Um, 
kind of take up some of that distance and we should be good. All right, so here they are, all buttoned up. You can see that the curve is real nice. There's pretty much like zero gap underneath of it. And for being plastic, these things are like on there. All right, so that's about it for this one. This was a cool little project, learning how to, you know, take that picture and trace it in the CAD program. Um, installing it, uh, I'm in, I'm 50-50 on it. I could have just retaped it like normal, uh, but then it would be harder to swap it out with different ones or to remove it if I wanted to. I maybe could have built it uh, or printed it uh, a little bit like thicker on that back side to give me a little bit more, you know, meat to screw into or something. Um, but all in all, I'm happy with it. Uh, it just kind of goes to show, you know, there's more than one way to kind of you know, get it, get a finished result, I guess you could say. All right, so that's about it for this one. Thanks for hanging out with us as always. Please give the video a thumbs up if you like this kind of stuff. Uh, hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with you know more stuff that we do. Um, and as always, guys, I'll see you in the next one.